Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Noelle and I do unboxings here. Mostly lifestyle subscription boxes, but also some stationery, books, beauty, jewelry, even a dash of Disney. So if you like unboxings, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell so that you find out whenever I post new videos or announce giveaways. I would also really appreciate if you followed me over on Instagram where my handle is Maui underscore Noelle. I will leave the link for that in the description box below. As always, if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for being here and welcome back. Today I have my October My Ireland box to share with you. So this time it came in a mailer so there's no labels on the front. It's still got a little bit dented but I think everything inside will be just fine. This box is $49.95 plus $10.50 in shipping to the states which I actually think is pretty reasonable for international shipping. I do have a way for you to save five dollars and that's just using the code Maui so I will definitely leave that link in the description box below. This particular box was sent to me for review so thank you so much to Catherine and the team at my Ireland box I really love this box not just because for whatever reason I sort of have an affinity to Ireland I think it's just because of that island culture even though it seems like it might be really different um, but it's really a, an experience every time we learn so much about the culture I struggle with some Irish Gaelic words and we get some awesome items made by artisans there in Ireland so inside we've just got some nice bright lime green tissue paper and and I'm just gonna open it up and see what we've got. There's usually like a pretty lengthy product sheet that tells us about the vendors that have included items, as well as, like I said, whatever the theme happens to be. I believe that the theme for October is like storytelling, like oral traditions, which I absolutely love that idea, especially as someone who studied poetry. And I really think that that's kind of a lost art. We have like a hard enough time memorizing a phone number, but there were people who could manage to know their entire family history and all of the different stories that went along with it and so I feel like that's something that would be really nice for us to get back to. It's definitely something for us to uh, sort of cherish what's remaining of it. So let me see, there's a couple items on top. I'm trying to get into our envelope. So here is the envelope which is like a little bit different than usual. And then inside we've got, yes, we've got our nice lengthy product sheet. There's usually a nice letter here from her. It says, Hello to you. We are very excited about this month's curation as we are really bringing a great Irish tradition into your homes. Oh boy, here we go. It does have the pronunciation though, so I'll try my best. It's Buthanthiut and Bailidus are significant components of Irish cultural inheritance. Buthanthiut refers to the visit to neighbor, friends, and family members' homes or their Buthan, which means a small house, with the main objective being to gather to visit and talk and mainly for an evening of storytelling and song to pass the night. So in Hawaii, I think we would call that story, uh, talk story. It says, in an era before television and electricity, there was very little else to do and it was a highlight on the social calendar. It is, I must say, still practiced here by some on the Dingle Peninsula, especially at Christmas time. And I have very fond memories of Christmas at my aunt's gorgeous pink cottage, sitting around the table, eating homemade mice pies and mince pies, I'm hoping, um, and drinking tea and all of us had to sing a song. My grandfather would sing a beautiful old Irish song in his amazing Gaelic blows, meaning accent when, when he spoke or sang in Gaelic, and he would tell a story or two. My grand aunts on my grandmother's side would sing the banks of my own lovely Lee about Cork's fine river Lee. I love the merging of Cork and Kerry, and to this day, I still love a group of sing song and hearing stories. So that's so sweet. Well, there's a lot more because it's telling us also that uh, Bailidus translate as education by mouth, and this was obviously the core of the as it ensured that the culture and stories of Ireland were passed down orally. Stories, poems, myths, and legends were transmitted from person to person through storytelling. In its purest form, this oral tradition was regulated by shankaha, or storytellers. Gathering together to trade stories and song and food is a huge part of the lives of the Irish, and if you enjoy it too, that's the dukas within you, uh, the uh, sort of affinity to culture. An inherent connection, and we explain all about this in the Dukas My, My Ireland box, which is one that I didn't actually get. So, so this October, we're bringing into your home some of the Irish stories of old that have been handed down from generation to generation here in Kerry, told by the turf fire, by the 
Shankaha, or the local storyteller, revealing old customs and beliefs filled with superstition, and we have given you some tasty treats to enjoy. Yes, more from our favorite, and this time fudge that can be shared. So that sounds awesome. Uh, so there's there's a ton of more information, you guys. It's like double-sided. So I'm going to go ahead and get into the items so we can see what we have got. So let's see. The first thing I'm seeing on top is a nice big bright box of some tea. You guys know that I have an abundance of tea in my household, but I'm certainly happy to try this. And I love that it's 40 tea bags. She definitely gave us a good amount. So let's see what it says about the uh, berries tea here. It says berries tea was founded in 1909 by James J. Berry, grandfather of their current chairman, Peter Berry. Um, so it just says if you've not tried berries yet, it may just become your new favorite. So, all right, so we've got some tea to uh, share. And you know, I feel like tea is definitely helpful on those cold nights when you're doing some storyteller storytelling, but there's other things that can keep you warm that I think sometimes kind of help people tell those uh, tales and yarns, right? So the next thing I am seeing, I'm very excited about this though, you guys. This is from Butler's and it's some vanilla fudge. How awesome does that look? And it's like a good size package actually. So I'm not sure. It's nice because I don't think it says the serving size. So um, it's pretty weighty though, just like fudge always is. So I, I think I'll manage to have enough self-control to not eat that all in one go. So it just says, you may know by now that Butler's is one of our favorite makers of Irish confectionery. We know most of you have a sweet tooth and we thought it a nice treat to include their handmade vanilla fudge for sharing perhaps. And then we've got a long history here of, of Butler's chocolates, but I won't necessarily go through all of that. So you guys will just have to get this box yourself. So you get to all the, all the knowledge that comes within it. And then let's see what else we've got. A book. This is cool. And I even like the image on the front. It says Carrie Folk Tales, and it's uh, edited by Gary Branigan and Luke Eastwood. But look at this I think it's like a ram or a goat and he's got a crown on it. So it says named after the peoples of Siaraj who inhabited the ancient territory, Carrie possesses a rich tapestry of history, legend, and folklore unparalleled by many others. In this book, authors Gary Brannigan and Luke Eastwood narrate a variety of myths and fables that will take you on a journey through Carrie's past. Many of the stories have been handed down by local people from generation to generation and reveal old customs and beliefs filled with superstition while others are more modern, showing the continuance of the Irish traditions of storytelling. I'm not going to try that word yet again when I don't have the pronunciation in front of me, but let's see what it says about this. I have to try to find it. So, so it says, I've really enjoyed this book and many of the stories are very familiar to me. I loved remembering some of them and they truly brought me back. They are a fascinating collection of tales and myths and legends. And then she just talks about some of the ones that, uh, of note, like, ooh, they have, like, included in the book are tales that we learned as children, such as Tirnanug and those of Fionn Macumel. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So uh, it just sounds like really good. It says the image on the front of the book is of a sketch drawing of the King of Puck from County Kerry. I used to work there for a short time as a solicitor, and that town has an amazing community spirit. Puck Fair is one of Ireland's oldest festivals, and during this ancient celebration, a wild male goat, oh, it's a goat, okay, uh, known as a Puck, is crowned king of the town for three days before being returned to his normal life in the Irish hills, his royalty all but ignored by his fellow goats. That's such a weird tradition, so I'm very interested to read a little bit more about that, because I assume one of the uh, tales in that book is about that. So that'll be fun. I like reading like legends and stories. Let me know if you guys like reading that kind of stuff. It's always sort of interesting. Ooh, we got a recipe card with a lovely picture. So it's uh, Kathleen Kane's Berenbrek or Barmbrack. So here is a lovely picture of this loaf of bread and it's on nice cardstock so you can hold on to it. And then it's just got, it says this recipe has been passed down through the generations of the O'Cathan Keen family beginning in the village of Valley Ferreter. Um, County Kerry and it's just got all of the information. It looks like it's kind of like a um, fruitcake, I think. So it says leave fruit in tea and optional whiskey overnight. So you can have it a little bit spicier than, than just plain so soaked in tea. So it says do not cut or eat until the brack is cool completely. So 
that's kind of fun. I do actually like to bake bread like this. I'm not re really great at like yeasty breads where you have to let it prove, but I think I can manage this one just looking at it. And I'll have to figure out like exactly what kinds of fruits because I don't usually like raisins in my bread. Let me know if you're one of those people. I actually think most fruitcake is pretty good. I know it gets like a bad wrap around the holidays, but I usually think it's like pretty tasty to snack on. So let me know in the comments below if you are pro or against. I think it's just a matter of like with most foods, like if you get a good quality one or if you get one that's kind of been like passed around for a while. So let's see what it says about this. This recipe has been passed down through the generations. It says Irish Barm Brack is a traditional sweet Irish Halloween bread that's specked speckled with dried fruit and flavored with Irish whiskey and strong tea. Hidden inside, as every good Irish person knows, are a clutch of small tokens that foretell one's future. Ooh, a ring for marriage, a coin for wealth, a soup pea for poverty, and a thimble for a life to share with one's good self. I've always known the barn rack to have the ring in it, and my goodness, the excitement if you were the one to find yourself crunching on it. What a wonderful Halloween tradition this is here in Ireland. That's so interesting. I definitely have to look that up. I don't know what a soup pea is you guys let me know if you know what a soup pea is um, and how I would get my hands on that to put it in the bread but of course you have to be really careful whenever you're putting little surprises and treats into anything like that so let's see I think we've got one final item in here and this is gorgeous just the material on it is so nice um, so this is from McNutt of Donegal Irish linen so very nice uh, let's see oh it's like a tote bag but I think you guys can just see um, it's not like super stiff. It's actually very soft and I love this like natural color. It's got really long straps so that's kind of nice because you can easily put it over your shoulder. But you guys see how long those are? That's really nice and I love having totes just because they're easily folded so you can always have them in your purse if you wind up grabbing a few things from the market or they're great when you're like doing little like weekend trips and traveling because often you wind up coming home with more things or things don't just quite like pack back in the way they did when you first left the house. So let's see what we have to say about that. Hmm. So this says, McNutts of Donegal has a long history of weaving wool and linen. All woven treasures are manufactured locally with knowledge and skill that has been handed down from generation to generation. It says, this is your beautiful Irish linen tote that was made for you by the linen makers in Donegal and will house your book, barm brack, fudge, and tea in your storytelling adventure because I still don't remember how to say it. So this is, they actually use the word that was, you know, going over to a friend's house for an evening of storytelling and song. It says, don't forget to remember that the linen you hold is a fabric of ancient times. We love the history attached to Irish linen. So that's so cool. I have to read all the rest about this, but I don't want to bore you guys. But this is, if you have an affinity to Ireland, and even if you don't, like I said, it's really an experience, and she does such a great job of curating the box each month to really go with the theme and kind of teach you something about that culture. So my favorite item in this box, for sure, for sure, is this gorgeous tote. I just think it's really cool great quality and it's something that's also really useful and I appreciate that it doesn't take up a ton of space. Um, of course I am also very intrigued by this fudge and it will probably not last very long. Totally fine with getting a little bit more tea especially because it's in tea bags and I don't necessarily have to like go through the you know the process of diffusing it. We'll see when I get around to trying to bake this bread but I'm always interested to know about kind of cultural recipes. I'll definitely give the I just almost called it the goat book. I will definitely give this book a read. I love having short stories that I can read and not necessarily have to sit down for a lot a week or so to get through everything and I'm sure these will be a quick read because they'll be very interesting. Um, so great box once again. Let me know what you guys thought about this October My Ireland box. What your favorite item was. If you have any memories of oral traditions or storytelling in your family I would love to hear them in the comments below. If you enjoy these videos you guys please do give it a thumbs up and hopefully I see you all very very soon in my next unboxing.